Hello friends, my name is Dr. Purud Dhawan and in this video we will talk about diet. What kind of food item should be taken by a kidney failure patient so that the complication can be prevented. In the kidney failure patient, diet play a very important role because kidney are non-functioning, kidney are not filtering well. What is happening with is the accumulation of waste material. And suppose we take those food items which contains extra amount of potassium, extra amount of calcium, what will happen? This all extra amount of potassium, calcium, phosphorus will get accumulated in our body which will cause further complication in the kidney failure patient life. So we can control lots of things in our body like calcium, phosphorus, uh, ketonin, urea by selecting right type of food items. Now let's start with ketonin and see how we can control the production of the ketonin in our body. Ketonin is a protein, it's a waste material which is excreted by our muscles during muscle metabolism. So if we want to control the production of ketonin in our body, we have to cut down the amount of protein intake. So all the kidney failure patients are advised to take protein free diet if their protein level in your blood is in range and if the blood protein level is lower than the normal values then you can take low density protein now the question arises what is low density protein and what is high density protein a protein which take lots of energy to get metabolized in the body is high density protein and protein which take lesser amount of energy to get uh, metabolized is low density protein so protein has two types high density and low density. In high density protein, all kind of animal products like fish, chicken, mutton comes. In low density protein, milk is there, pulses are there, you can also count egg white into this category. Now before moving towards uh, what kind of protein you should take, first you evaluate your report. If the level of the protein is in the range, then select protein free diet. And if the level of the protein is lower than the normal values, then take the low density protein. Now the question arises, if the person have the right amount of protein in the blood, how that person can survive without protein intake? When we take carbohydrates in the form of wheat, rice and other form, it will convert it into the protein according to the requirement of the body. Because carbohydrate is a small molecule. When the body needs protein, what happens? These small molecules of carbohydrate join together to form protein. But when we take protein, what happens to get it, you know, utilized by the body, body has to you know, break it down in a smaller particles. And during this breakdown of the protein, large amount of waste material is excreted, which we don't need in a kidney failure patient. So in a patient who have normal amount of protein in the blood can take protein free diet because the body will form protein from carbohydrates as per the body requirement. So in a kidney failure patient where the amount of protein in the blood is in range, select protein free diet and if the protein level is low in your blood, then take low density protein. Now the question arises what amount of low density protein should be taken by a kidney failure patient if the level of the protein is lesser than the normal range. The amount of the protein should be taken around 25 to 50 gram per day. So we suggest all the kidney failure patients to take one bowl of pulses on alternate day or two egg white on alternate day. We can't take protein, even low density protein on a regular basis. We have to just fulfill the amount of protein requirement of the body. So I think the concept of protein intake is clear to all viewers. Now let's move to the urea. Urea is something which is excreted through liver during food metabolism. So we can't control the amount of urea with the help of diet because whatever we eat it will be metabolized by our liver and during that metabolism what will happen? Urea will excrete it. Only urea can be controlled with the help of kidney because kidney has function to excrete it out. We have to use that function of the kidney. Now, how we can increase excretion of the urea through kidney? Kidney is an organ which has special power to increase its function. Unlike liver, liver can be regenerated, but kidney can't be regenerated, but kidney can expand its functions to filter out the waste metal from the body. I will give you an example. Suppose a person had donated one kidney to the another. Now the person who has donated the kidney has only single kidney. Even on a single kidney, the level of kidney in urea doesn't increase. Now the question arises why? Because a single kidney has expanded its functions to clear out all the waste material from the body. Now we have to use that particular power of the kidney in all kidney failure patient. Now when in a kidney failure patient we increase the filtration power of the kidney, what will happen? The urea level will drop. The 
ketamine level will drop because now the kidney is filtering much better than before we have done two things we have controlled the amount of ketamine production in the body also we have increased the output of the kidney with the help of kidney function resolution treatment what is kidney function resolution treatment what is kfrt will be discussed in the end of this video now let's move to another component of the uh, food that is potassium potassium is a thing which is present in each and every food item whatever you eat that contains potassium but in few items it's contained in a moderate amount in few item is contained in a large amount so what we have to do we have to select those food item that contains potassium in a lesser amount for that we give you a very simple rule in case of vegetable always avoid rooty vegetables which is tuberous and always avoid leafy vegetables now let's move to the potassium because potassium is something which is very dangerous if the level of the potassium increases above level of 7 it will can cause you cardiac arrest because potassium is a thing which gives power to your muscles and when the level of the potassium increases it causes you fatigue it causes weakness in the muscles because our heart is also made up of muscles when the potassium increases the movement of the heart slows down and causes cardiac arrest so we have to control the potassium now potassium is present in each and every food item where we eat so let's start with vegetable any vegetable which is grown below the surface of earth which are tuberous in nature contains potassium in high amount like potato sweet potato turnip and any vegetable which is leafy in nature like uh, spinach coriander mint parsley contain potassium in high amount so we have to avoid all these vegetables but in tuberous vegetables in root vegetables there are three exceptions that is onion radish and carrot these three vegetables which are tuberous in nature which are rooty in nature can be taken by the kidney failure patient any vegetable which is grown as a fruit on a plant or a creeper can be taken by a kidney failure patient and that also without leech vegetables like cucumber snake grout 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 bitter grout any vegetable which is come from the cucurbitaceae family can be taken along with tomato brinjals okra because all these vegetables contain potassium in a lesser amount and we don't have to leach them before cooking. Now let's move to the fruit category. In fruit category, we have to avoid banana, kiwi, avocado, dry fruits, raisins and we have to avoid all kinds of citrus fruits also. And this fruits can be taken by a kidney failure patient like apple is there, papaya, muskmelon, watermelon, custard apple, all these fruits can be taken but the quantity should be one cup because if we take fruit quantity more than one cup the potassium will start accumulating in our body so we have to avoid extra amount of fruits in a kidney failure patient now let's move to the water if the kidney failure patient take lesser amount of water what will happen the production of the urine will fall and the excretion of ketamine through urine will also fall which will cause the elevation of the ketamine in the blood and if the patient of the kidney failure take large amount of water, what will happen? This water will start accumulating in the body because kidney are not functioning well. And as the water accumulated, there will be further complications. So we have to control the amount of fluid in a kidney failure patient. For that purpose, we use the sensor which are given by the nature to us. And that is our lips, our throat. If your lips are dry, your throat is dry, that means you are feeling thrust. And thrust is a sign that there is a deficiency of water inside your body. So we will start taking water, but the quantity of the water or the fluid will be half cup to one cup at a time suppose you have taken one cup of water or half cup of water wait for a few minutes let it accumulate it by the body after taking one cup or half cup of water always wait for a few minutes let the body assimilate that water let the body process that fluid first then again take the water if you feel the thirst again so at a time we will take only half cup to one cup just to control the level of the fluid so whenever your throat is dry your lip is dry that means you can take half cup or one cup of water at a time then wait for few minutes and then again if you feel the thirst you can again take the water by this way you can control the amount of fluid in the body which will help you to cut down the complication in your life now let's move to the salt. Salt is the thing which is composed of sodium and chloride. Suppose a kidney failure patient take large amount of salt. What will happen? There will be the accumulation of water inside the body. There will be the increased level of 
displaced pressure in the body. So that will cause further complication in the body. We have to avoid that extra amount of salt. And suppose if the patient of kidney failure take lesser amount of salt, what will happen? There will be decreased level of sodium and chloride in your report and that will cause fatigue weakness in a kidney failure patient. So we have to maintain the level of sodium and chloride with the help of salt and we also have to control blood pressure and amount of fluid inside the body with the salt. So all the kidney failure patients are advised to take only one pinch of salt in each meal. And now the question arises what kind of salt can be taken by a kidney failure patient. So we advise patients to take either pink salt which is Himalayan salt or the sea salt but the quantity is important always take only one pinch of salt in each and every meal and avoid all kind of salted snacks because when you're taking snacks you're taking extra amount of salt and that will cause extra complication in your life and always avoid all other things which contain salt in high amount now the question arises can this kind of diet can help a patient to revive the kidney the answer is no. With this kind of diet, we can control the amount of waste material in our body, but we can't revive the kidney. For a kidney failure patient where the disease is self-progressive in nature, we have to use kidney function reassertion treatment because this treatment is based on herbs. This treatment is based on the phytochemicals which are present in many herbs, which will help your kidney to perform better than before. Suppose you have taken coriander in high amount, what will happen? It will increase your urine output because it's diuretic in nature. Suppose you have taken black pepper in high amount, what will happen? You will feel the burning sensation in your chest area. All the herbs contain some kind of active phytochemical which works inside our body. So we have to select those herbs, those plants that can increase our kidney function. On this principle of phytochemicals, we have developed kidney function research and treatment. And the best part of this treatment is that you can check your level of creatinine, urea again within the span of one month. Suppose you have start taking kidney function research and treatment from this day. So you have to do very simple thing. You have to go to the lab, you have to give your blood sample and ask for the amount of creatinine in your blood and urea in your blood. And after completion of the 25th day a go again to the lab and test your kidney level i can assure you 80 percent of kidney failure patients shows results in the very first month the amount of kidney goes down the amount of urea goes down why it happens because kidney needs certain kind of boost certain kind of stimulus to increase its function with the help of phytochemicals with the help of herbs we can increase kidney function easily which is easily visible in your kft report or rft report within a time span of 25 days so to control the amount of creatinine in your body you have to do two things first you have to take care of your food second you have to increase the function and for that purpose we have to use kidney function dissociation treatment i hope with this video you have learned a lot about kidney functions, a lot about the diet what should be taken by a kidney failure patient. If you have any kind of doubt query regarding kidney failure, simply call on the number given below. Our doctor will call you back and they will help you to fight this deadly disease. With this, allow me to say goodbye. See you in the next video. Till then, bye-bye.